always coming to you for advice about friendship? What's funny about that? You know, because you used to be famous for being such a bad friend. Alright, lesson time, kids. This is how not to point out something awkward. That and is always the best trolls are always true. Now, this is the spike I have hoped for since Castle Sweet Castle. Ever tell a girlfriend something like this and have her lose her mind along these lines? I'm not shipping it, even though the cooking, the conversation, and all the domestic nature in this scene not only comes off as boyfriend and girlfriend, it feels, well, married couple. You really think that they think I'm a bad friend? Well, I only meant that you've come so far. Well, you're a great friend now and- oh, I Spikes backpedaling to Twilight's overreaction, Spikes lamenting over opening up his mouth in the first place. Wait a minute, who's behind this episode? Strangely enough, Twyla Spike is the best thing here since Griffinstone, so I'm just gonna be grateful and take it. Come on, Twilight, you're getting worked up about nothing. Telling Twilight she's getting worked up about nothing. Has this relationship already existed or is this just in this episode? Okay, I like the dusty atmosphere, the nostalgia moment feels right, but this room in this castle, no one at any time came in here to clean it up? It's exactly how we left it. It's almost like Celestial literally can't do anything without Twilight. Fandom portrayal are almost universal opposites. In the show, Celestia is a very kind, very patient, and very motherly figure. <laughs> Even order her help to clean up the place. Oh, uh, Minuet, Twinkle Shine, Lemon Hearts, Lyra Heartstrings... Oh my god, we're getting Lyra again! I was gonna skip over those names! Guys, we're getting Lyra! Sweet mother of god! So, Minuet... Twinkle Shine, Lemon Hearts, Moon Dancer, and Lyra Heartstrings! Life is good! You know what? We're gonna be okay! We're gonna be okay! Oh, nice! I did a little research, and I think I know where we can find Minuet. We're doing these one at a time. I was concerned that they were gonna have Twilight bump into them all at once. A little research? Crazy stalker girlfriend. And it's Colgate! This is officially what episode 100 should have been! Speaking of creepy vibe, anyone else notice the Kathy Bates vibe off of Colgate here? Wait, wait, wait! Really fluff him up, huh? <laughs> well, that was convenient. You wanna go see Lemonheart from Twinkle Shy? Of course! My old friends! It'll be great! Sadly, I don't think we get to see Colgate's dusty stalker house. Oh well, it is a Y-rated show. Great! <laughs> Come on, let's fly! That was super cringe, like G3.5 cringe. Twinkle Shine and Lemon Hearts. Huh. Did anyone else notice Colgate here, the brief contour in her eyes? Either like someone was lying or leaving something out. If that happens to be the case in this episode, this happened to be an amazing design decision. Wait, my friends. And that's because I didn't know how important friendship was. But I've learned so much since I moved to Ponyville. I learned what it means to be a good friend, and that I certainly wasn't one to the three of you. So for all the pain I caused you, I am truly sorry. Okay, this is super duper weird. This right here feels like we're wrapping up the episode. M.A. Larson could have easily taken them all on wacky hijinks for 22 minutes, and, and had this at the end. Wait, is M.A. Larson subverting an MLP norm by putting a third act trope in the first act? Oh, come on, Twilight! Sure, it might have stung a little bit when you ran off to Ponyville without saying goodbye, but it's not like we weren't used to that from you. Yeah, we didn't take it personally, but it's really good to see you now. This is one of the best lessons of the show. Sometimes the things that you feel guilty about that are driving you nuts are all in your head. It's kind of tricky to find out which one sometimes, and it's not always going to give you the fairy tale ending like this. It really pays to ask most of the time. Twilight's Origins. If you needed a season final to be a slice of life, I'd be okay with doing this. Dear Lord. Overpowered Alicorn. Oh my god, there are no words to describe this. The visuals in this episode. This is drowning in camp. Mwah! It's us! Your old friends! Okay, so Moon Dancer is season 1 Twilight. M.A. Larson, you're just showing off now. I've seen some fans say basically Sunset Shimmer is Twilight without the friendship lesson in Equestria Girls, but we never see how much of a study nut she is. Okay. <laughs> That's old Moon Dancer, alright! 
Someone explain to me why fan pandering is bad. We see Twilight with background characters spreading lessons of friendships to grumpy earlier versions of Twilight. This seems exactly what bronies, at least the Twilight Sparkle contingency of I Am One Of, would want to see. See that? That's how easy it is to replace Pinky. Those sunglasses better be at BronyCon. Dancer is having a little get together in the West Castle courtyard. Oh my god, this episode already blew past 10 out of 10. But this, that moon dancer from the pilot? Screw anyone who whines about the background ponies. Behold the face of impending doom, the friendship agenda. <gasps> You know there's an art form to this, and not everyone can do the fancy meeting you here shtick. Oh, side note, dear god, Moon Dancer's hair, like you, it's an alicorn princess running around being juvenile, cute, and obnoxious. My own critical feedback on this? It's so good! If you're having a good time, ignore me, but I'm just being a pain in the ass. Cadence, Celestia, or Luna could use a fraction of this. I give up by surrender, you win, Larson, this show is all yours. Be amazed how much you can pick up when you're actually in a book. It's one of Haycart's methods. You know Haycart? Of course, he's a genius. I have a copy of his treaties on ponies, you know. You know, this is a terrible message, but you do have to bribe some people to get them to open up to you. I'd know. We gotta go fly more often, Twilight! I take it back, there's no replacing Pinky. Continuity, callbacks, Pinky slipping jabs. If this is ham-fisted, you're asking the wrong person to be critical at this point. Okay, they James Woods Moondancer. As for Moondancer's breakdown, I'm not even sure what they were going for. Maybe she can't be everyone's friend, or... I don't even know. The ending itself feels weird. It's conceivable the nostalgia of the scene itself is what forced Moondancer to have a rushed, repressed emotional response. Everything else is handled so amazingly well, and this is a minor misnote for me. Final thoughts? Drowning in nostalgia and callbacks. Personally, I'm fond of saying I'm immune to nostalgia's poison, and then something like this comes along, and I'm mostly talking out my ass. I'm 110% spoiled now. How do I go back to Princess Spike after this? I don't want to leave this episode. It's like having the best steak of your life and being told that you have to go back to McDonald's now. Oh, M.A. Larson, you are the king of cruel. So till next time, don't ask why a field burns or a plague spreads. All for no good reason.